Let's continue with example six. So here we're asked to multiply out a plus b, the quantity raised to the third power. Hopefully you remember that something cubed is really just the quantity multiplied by itself twice more or three times total. So a plus b cubed is really just a plus b times a plus b times another a plus b. And here, unlike the previous problem, it doesn't matter which ones you multiply first. So we can multiply these two or multiply the second and the third, or multiply the first and the third, they're all the same terms. So it doesn't matter which order you multiply them in. But hopefully you remember that there's a nice formula that we can use here for a perfect square. Uh, the square of some formula, which is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. If we multiply this by a plus b, we can distribute the a into this trinomial, plus, then distribute the b into the trinomial, once we clean up this, and, and please uh, pause the video, make sure that all of this is done correctly. We get a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. And in fact, this is another formula that it, uh, it would benefit you to memorize. This is the cube of some, or the cube of binomial formula. If you replace x with a and a with b, you end up the exact same thing we just got here. So the way I would prefer you guys to memorize this is actually as uh, placeholders. So a lot of times students will memorize things with x's and y's or x's and a's or a's and b's, and then when the letters change, then they get stuck. So here, what you want to do is say, whatever the first term is before the plus sign, I'm going to cube it. So the first term is x, I'm going to cube it. Here, by contrast, the first term was a, so we cubed that. So if you memorize it in general, that whatever is the first term, we have to cube it, plus 3 times, now here you'll notice that ax squared is written as such because a is a constant and x is a variable. But really what's happening is 3 times this quantity squared, whatever is first, is being squared times this quantity. So if you have 3x squared times a, you can rearrange that to write this. So the way this formula is presented in many textbooks, as in ours, students don't tend to see or get a very good handle on where exactly this is coming from. And it's really just the same as this. Here, it's a little more obvious in my opinion. We have three times the first term squared times the second, plus three times the first term times the second squared, three times the first times the second squared, plus the last term squared, or the second term, uh, sorry, not squared, cubed. So again, cube the first term, three times square the first times the second, plus three times the first times square the second, plus cube the second. And if this had been a minus in the middle, then the signs would just alternate. So plus, minus, plus, minus. And that's exactly what we have here in this formula. With the x minus a cubed formula, we have plus, minus, plus, minus. And then with the plus, all the terms are the same. I'm going to jump right into the example here since it's the last one. Let's say we're asked to multiply x minus 8 to the third. Now we could very well do exactly what we did here. We could write out x minus 8, x minus 8, x minus 8, and multiply that out. But consider how much shorter this is. If we know that formula, or we know the recipe of what to do with it, cube the first term, x cubed, minus, remember you have to alternate signs whenever the middle term is a minus, so minus 3 times square the first term, x squared, times the second, times 8, plus 3 times the first, x, times the square of the second, 8 squared, minus the second cubed, 8 cubed. And then this is now just the arithmetic. x cubed comes along, 3 times 8 is 24, so we get negative 24x squared, 3 times 8 squared, which is 64, is 192, x, and then 8 cubed is 512. Now, hopefully you can see that this is in standard form. It's all the decreasing powers of x. 
And if you're so inclined, I would maybe multiply this out, uh, quote unquote, the long way and see if you do end up getting the same answer. I, I think that that needs to be done at least a couple of times so that you can really appreciate how much time and effort knowing these formulas saves you.